Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I don't know if this is gonna come about as a fix or what, but what I have is I have a one liter EcoBoost Boost Ford Focus, and we have 147,000 kilometers on it. And what's happening is when we, customers complained, check engine light came on, he had some kind of a warning on the dash about overheating, and they were on a motorway, but it kept driving at that point in time. And then when it got home, which he must have drove in theory with little or no water in it, but it's gone to the point that it wouldn't start. So we went to him to start the car and it was trying to start and eventually it, it did start, but we had loads of steam coming at the back of it. Now, here's where we're at. We had put, we, I didn't, I, I had put a pressure tester on it here just to see where the actual coolant was going because it was a little bit lower but they said they topped it up and it had got hot so when we got to it it wasn't empty but it was lower than what it was expected they said they put in stuff themselves now what i done was put a pressure tester on it pressure was dropping fairly fast and i don't know can you see That water, it is just pure water at this point in time because I wasn't putting in antifreeze to spit it out on the ground. Um, it's dripping off the lower down section of the exhaust where it actually joins onto the tailpipe heading back. But it's dripping water from the exhaust system, not from the car, or not from the engine, but from the exhaust system itself. Now, we're going to see this. It's hard now to see it. That's a plug hole in there. I took out one, two, and three plugs out of it. I did see coolant type residue on them. And then with the pressure tester on it, that's what's happened on number one cylinder. So it's filled with water. I was getting myself set up for a boroscope. Camera to go to the cylinders to have a look, but it's that bad at this point that I don't need to go in there. Plug hole number two, relatively dry. Number three, relatively dry. I can still see a residue of coolant in there. Maybe we don't need to go in, maybe with a boroscope, I don't think. Not when we have the evidence that we have. Damp and wet in there, but it, I don't know if it's coolant arrived or what, but the long and short of it is now we have a head gasket gone. There's a shine off, but maybe it's not coolant. Sorry, my lamp. That's water, isn't it? I'm believing that that little residue here is water, caught in a little chamber. Down here. I'd say, okay, right, I don't know whether we're going to get this as a job, but for now, what we're probably going to be doing is, uh, if we get it, is a, a head gasket on a one liter EcoBoost engine. Okay, just a, another little fast check in cylinder number three. I think we, there's a kind of a glare from my camera. I'm sorry, from my headlight on it. You can see the water residue all the way around number three cylinder. And I can see it accumulating, if we want to call it, along here between the cylinder head and the actual block. Okay, this is a confirmed anyway for definite. Even though the water was in number one cylinder, number three cylinder, we have the same kind of residue. So look, we're condemning this thing, head gasket gone in a bad, 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 bad. Okay, guys, a week or so has passed. Man has been pondering on this. Is he going to do the head gasket or not? So at this point in time, anyway, we're at the getting to go ahead. We are driving forward. So I'm just, after pulling it in, sizing the thing up, it's kind of crackers because even with the water filling the cylinders, it still starts. So there's a little bit of smoke at the back of it, but it starts. So even after sitting there for a week, turn the key and up to the fire. Now, what we're going to do, I suppose I'm going to have to pull off the plastic at the bottom of the wipers there. I'm going to start ripping off bits and pieces. I've ordered stuff. I've ordered a head gasket, head bolts, thermostat, water housings, water pump. I've never, I didn't replace the washer 
down here on a wet belt because this is the one I done a wet belt down there six or eight months ago and lo and behold I'm going to change that and put that washer in there I'm going to leave the belts in there because they are fairly new but we're going to start stripping all this I have a rock cover gasket and intent manifold gaskets and stuff I'm doing it in situ normally I throw it out on the ground but I think in this one on this case or in this case we're leaving it in there and in place have my big white tray of knowledge which I actually washed yay battered and bruised but it's cleaner um, yeah where are we going to start start this stuff off all the auxiliary stuff like intake pipes and stuff drain a bit of water out of it I don't think there's much in it but we'll drain a bit of water out of it anyway and start rolling forward turbo's going to have to come off and we'll just start going and we'll touch base in a minute okay guys where I have brought this to so far as I've pulled off the ancillaries as we said the old intercooler pipes etc I have taken off a bit of plastic cowling and wipers just again a bit of access I've pulled off any bits of wiring harness we can get to get off the rocker cover what I'm hoping that when I have the rock cover off, I get a little bit more room to get in the intake manifolds and potentially maybe then roll on out the front for turbo and stuff before going disassembling here. Purely only just because of the ability, I suppose, to carry the engine. Right now, the engine mounting is sitting there and holding it. So I'm going to get off as much as I can before I go in here. And yeah, that's it. High pressure pump off and stuff. Not that awkward now to this point. It's just a little bit of work and pulling off a few bits of plastic and stuff, but... Going to keep on rolling on. Might tackle the intake manifold next because I'm nosy as to how awkward that's going to be. This bit is not bothering me at this point in time at all, but I'm going in there maybe and pull off a few bits back there and see what access we have in there next, okay? Okay, guys, that was easier than expected. I just had whatever bits and pieces pulled off. There's no silly stuff stuck on the back of the intake manifold. Um, what have we got? Four bolts along the top, three on the bottom. And again, someone asked me to say this one time. All I used was my Milwaukee ratchet, a little short extension, and a deep eight socket. And I had them all off within cool, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Um, not very long, anyway. it was a wire and loom connected onto the actual bottom bolts. So just <coughs> onto the bolts, but it was simple enough. So that's off, on we're rolling. Next second. Couple of brackets off. Bit of heat shields off around the exhaust. Manifold and bolted. Time to go underneath and start taking off a few bits and pieces down here. I think the cat and stuff. Um, first, and then we come back up here to take off the turbo. Now, from underneath, as I said already, I done a wet belt on this a good while ago, and people were giving out that I. Some people were giving out that I cut the exhaust there. At that point in time, it was the easiest. I don't think of any problem with it, but I'll show you why. Someone had been at the exhaust prior to me. A top nut is not tight. There's an air gap. Like you see that? And they put a big knob of weld on there. That was now before me getting my hands on it. This point in time, I'm probably gonna nip that off. Cut the stud and try and know, get it back as it should be. But that's the reason on the last one that I, I nipped it there purely because I knew I was going to encounter grief up here and this was going to make it faster for me. Um, anyway, at this point in time, nip that off, do some kind of clean up on bolt stuff here and get the exhaust off. Okay, we have our exhaust cat, whatever I call it, off. We also have our turbo off sitting in hand here. I was looking and debating what way I was going to go. I was wondering if I was going to take off that actual oil return pipe there. I chose not to. When I done a little bit of looking in there, it was relatively easy to get up with these two bolts for this return here. They were sitting there quite handy. What did I use? I where was Actually, look a longish little torx, and I used a ratchet spanner, which was a little ratchet spanner. A little ratchet spanner for the inside one, and then I just went air ratchet on the outside one. It was handy. On the top, then the oil feed that's coming. I just pulled off that little banjo bolt there, and that's relatively handy. I think the next bit is, well, in order to bring the head up off it, it's gonna be just that one bolt sitting there. These, actually a bit of heat shield, is only one little size eight sitting in there. So look, this is all starting to get accessible now. Have the welds cut off the exhaust, cat is thrown on the ground, and I just fit it down and left it sit on the ground down here. But we're starting to get access. At least there's nothing at the back, there's nothing, or at least very little at the front now. And we're quite shortly going to be rolling on into our actual sump off and our timing cover and stuff. 
Can I actually take off the time cover? I don't know. Can I? Maybe I can take off the time cover without removing the sump on this occasion. I don't actually know. Anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll roll on and start disassembling this side over here. Uh, next. Okay, we're going underneath, bring it up in the air to actually get our time and belt stuff disassembled or taken off because at this stage I have my time belt kit just because I don't have a time restraint and I ordered it after the last job I done up and in here just above the drive shaft to the rear that little bolt comes out little size 10 and then you spin in the actual locking pin that then gives us our little what do you call it crank pulley position of about one o'clock which I've spoken about in the last videos there's another little pin to go in here to line it up, but I'm not going to put that in at this point in time. At this point in time, it's going to be cranked that bolt open. Just going to use a little power tool to work the last day, so I'm going to do it again on this one at this stage and then start disassembling here, okay? I'm not concerned with upstairs right now. I'm only concerned myself with down the bottom. And then up top, we can uh, figure out when we move on. These camshaft timing adjusters here, there's nothing to worry about them at all, okay? I know I have them marked from the last time because I was taking apart without locking tools and I was fearful, but they just pop out and there's a little plunger that sits there basically when that's controlled it'll press that plunger and send in or allow more oil to get in or out and to advance or retard cam timing but you can unbolt them without any fear of anything okay what i'm doing is i am i like the marking that's on it is only just to identify which position it goes in i don't think it matters but just which position for me going back in the same place engine mountain pulled off pulled off my water pump um, running out ranks of bolts around the actual timing cover. Lads to be panicking about these things, but there is a couple of different bolts in there. And all I'm doing is I'm just putting a little yellow marking around only and solely these ones. They are for lining up the actual cover in the right position. Okay, so I have yellow marks on both of them, yellow marks where they go into. These are engine mountains and all the rest of the bolts are the same size. What I'm going to point out is just as one a hide in there underneath. So don't, um, don't forget that one. You can't, you can't see it too easy. Get it out of it, all right? That's it, hopefully. I'm, I'm thinking that the cover, timing cover will come off on top without taking off the sump. Now I have the engine supported down the bottom with an axis stand, the block of wood. And I'm hoping that that thing is going to come off and we can just lob our belt off and start pulling off the head. Okay, all the bolts out. You have to take out, loosen a couple of bolts in the air conditioning pump down there, and a little wiggle and woggle, two bolts out of the back of that, what do we call it? Housing, water housing. Wiggle and woggle and out come, or is coming, my time and cover. Okay. As simple as that. Go down there. For the time being. Okay, we're back into where we need to go. On the last one, I had to take off the sump and stuff for that actual oil pump belt. On this occasion, I don't have to. Well, hey, come here. What I'm told, also, I'm told that these, these uh, cylinder heads crack like crazy. So it's going to have to be pressure tested as well as skimmed. And I'm been asked by Cork Engine Centre to leave the camshafts in it and followers in case he's going to have to sell me a whole head and I'm assuming that they just transfer that stuff up there or they they come complete with camshafts and stuff in it and he reuses them or something I do not know but that's been left in it to go to um, Cork Engine Centre now I have to pull off a thermostat housing here the belt off and then at that point I'm hoping that's it okay I pulled off the camshafts now they're taking up the actual tap it they're not hydraulic they're shimmed so just put them in the same order in here on the injectors there's these three little brackets they just lift it out i think the fuel rail is actually what holds them in place i didn't try and wiggle and woggle at the injectors as of yet but uh, maybe i might do it when it's out i might i'd see uh, they should come out in handy anyway and then we're into what is it one two three four eight head bolts i have taken off the water I, pipes off that water housing so that's going to come up with me and then I can unbolt that when out and in hand I think we're just on the home run lads getting there now okay head bolts out they are the only thing I had it's that kind of a square torx rather than a normal torx I'm going and the only well 
what I knew of grabbed his deck and set it to size what? Is it on it? M9, don't know if the new headboard's gonna be the same. It's something better for squeezing them down, just on this occasion I got them out like that, handy enough. Time for the head to be pulled off. Let's see. It moves kind of easy enough, but it's gonna be a two-handed job to pull it up. Okay, head off it. Visually, I don't see what I normally see where I'd see the rings being kind of bad around here. So I don't, but I do see that it is after reddening massively is that they're cooking the gasket all the way around but yet with water getting into the cylinders so could we be caught with potentially a crack in this head as man in Cork Engine Centre said they do crack like crazy so it's been pressure tested we're going to know when it's pressure tested and um, yeah, get it get it off to him get out the injectors get out the smart plugs get off that house and get it up to the lads and see where we end up okay guys we have our head back but i don't know if you notice anything about it she's very shiny why is she very shiny very shiny because the other head was cracked and we needed to renew so we had to buy a new head from Cork Engine Centre and yeah what do we what do we say what do we do it's head was cracked and because the head was cracked we had no option other than to renew it so they set them up they swapped the valves over and new valves from oil seals and re-shimmed the camshafts and all that crack before we got it back and that's it that's what's going back into the vehicle that's here beside me um, yeah, time to start the, the reverse cycle, everyone going back in. Okay, just in case any wanted. Water pump, time belt, whatever, water pump number. Plastic house in the back of the water pump. Elbow to call it, part number, saying it's the 2118104 number. There's a washer, I didn't replace this the last time, but I'm told by Mr. Sandy Anderson that um, it makes life a lot easier when squeezing them up to have this sit in place. So I've bought two, one for stock and one keep. What is that? It's my thermostat. Actually sitting there, parent number, uh, head bolts. Again, if anyone wants. Intake manifold gaskets, replacing them also. Head gasket. Which is nice. Time for the reassembly process. I'll take the camshaft off of her again. Uh, they only send them up to, to shim them. So as I said there, they, they sat them in, they reseated the valves and they, they uh, re-shimmed these things. So the camshaft has come off again for me to get in my head bolts. I can actually get in at probably a lot of them, but I just can't get in at them all. So I can't get in at that one, I can't get in at that one. And the camshaft has come off to do that. But I have the head. I have my, sorry, my head, my block. You know, I've also gave a little bit of a clean up and ready for the gasket and bits and pieces to go back in and it's sit you and start closing this thing down. Okay, I've just sat on the gasket and actually left the head sit on it for pulling off my camshafts. Have my um, crank rotator to lock in and all the valves are closed there so it's all easy, but this is a bit that I'm, I'm actually clicking on for now. Thought this is very interesting. I've seen and heard about these things. It's a sticker that changes color as the car if the engine gets hot. So if it runs out of water and the um, cooling temperature sensor doesn't see it, it's one thing, but I think, look, 99 degrees is there, 110 degrees is there, sorry, I'm gonna try and steady the camera up, and 120 degrees is there. So if the actual, if the actual, if the engine itself gets hot after we redo it and we went off and said, oh, hey, something wrong with the head, what they're actually going to know is if this thing got red again. I've seen them somewhere, but I've never actually had them in my hand. I didn't put that on it. That's from the manufacturer, maybe. Pretty cool sticker right on the frost plug, sitting in a right time belt. Deadly. If that gets red, that changes color, and it tells them how hot this engine got. The block without, um, without water inside it. Pretty, pretty cool, lads. Okay, guys. Cylinder head tightening torques. 
I actually don't know why they go and make everything so flume and awkward nowadays. Like, yes, we knew the head bolts. 10 newton meters, 40 newton meters, slacking off 45 degrees. Tighten to 30 newton meters. Tighten 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Why don't you just give me two or three settings and I just squeeze this thing down rather than... Because it doesn't make them better. It's a four, well, 2016, seven-year-old car and this thing is now, I don't know, being ripped asunder. Like, this crack doesn't make them better, so... I don't know what the heck it's all about. Anyway, there's your, the way you should be tightening. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, okay? And there's our tightening torques. That's my rant, anyway, for today, okay? Talk Before to I you squeeze then. up my, my head bolts, I'm just going to show you. I only had an old Allen key to take it out. I've never used these before out of my toolbox. She's an RI-10, okay? It's kind of a square head tor torques or torx, and that's what we're head bolting, okay? Or head socket i need for the head bolts okay guys oh this is going to mean very little to anyone but I, i've done the second 90. what i normally do is i kind of get a i set my my torque ratchet to roughly in that 90 degrees how much torque i'm actually getting right so i hear an audible click as well on the last 90 degrees that was the last 90 degrees but i can i know that i can get them all that they're all pretty much the same not just squeeze there's me 90 degrees and it's just i got the last little click as well i don't know might not be of any great help to anyone, but for me, I just get a number in my head that in theory I'm going to roughly have here. And what are we on? 84 or something Newton meters. But it's just for me. So they're all, I know the same distance has been traveled with 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Well, 30 Newton meters, 90, 90. Um, but I'm getting a, a number on that that I'm going to have all roughly the same for myself. Right, right, drive right on. Okay, head torqued and first time I pulled out this little... Locking tool out of my box. Let's turn down there. It's pretty cool, yoke. Took me a minute or two to figure out what way around they go, but all fairly relatively easy. All it does is that little square piece here sits on one camshaft, same on the opposite side. You can adjust this little wee little, what do you call that thing there? Little, what is it? You can spin your crankshaft, camshaft, sorry, so you can see that little bit of movement there, okay? All you do is just spin in. Oh, do you know what maybe I should have done is, no, I don't think so. Should have left me not. Maybe I need a, an Allen key or something like that, but I, to get rid of that bit of movement. Anyway, that one I have gone out of by my finger here, but I may need a six. Um, maybe the whole thing needs to slide that way a slight little bit. I'm not going to be too fussed with it, but anyway, it is a handy bit of kit. I also didn't take the starter out of it, and on the last occasion I had the sump off to mark my flywheel. On this occasion I have the lock and pin in the back. I'm assuming if I torque really hard here, I could bend the lock and pin. I'm gonna, I squeeze these things tight. Hundreds, thousands of people were saying to me, 500 Newton meters torque multiplier. I don't know, I, I'm, look, I'm using logic and sense here. If that bolt is squares tight, that bolt is tight, it's going nowhere. Like the same rigmarole with the head bolts, they're kind of crackers. They just come up with cracker stuff that make you get all stressed and worried. Forget the stress, squeeze the thing. If you're a mechanic doing this, which are nearly going to be a mechanic, because a lot of lads won't take on this thing, you'll know yourself, your gut will tell you, that when you squeeze that tight with whatever it may be, two foot, two and a half long uh, bear, once that thing is squeezed and tight, it ain't going anywhere. I'm going to put in that shim here as well. and Yeah. But anyway, let's see, I'll move that thing over and I'll get my belt on. Okay, I have the time belt turned on. And I was debating on trying to use this bit of the timing tool. It locks in. I think into these phasers somehow. But on this occasion, I just think it's too much involved. Don't need to know. I'm just gonna get the engine back together. What I've been looking at is the phasers will move, okay? They'll move forward and backwards. Probably would be nice, I just, look, maybe if I undone that, I could, yeah, figure out how this works, but. On this occasion, look, I don't know how it works. And I don't believe, it's not going to bother timing it at all. At all. The base of the these little phasers are going to just press on this to leave, allow more oil flowing around them to advance or retard more. Once my cams are right and my crank is right, I'm going to, I'm going to stop at this point. I'm going to, belt to sitting up and on these. It does move to get me lined up and taut in here, but I'm just going to have everything sitting together, have the crank pulley and stuff cleaned up. I never took out, or didn't take out tensioner bolt on this occasion, so it's torqued since the last time. I'm just going to pull and see, and I believe, look, I'm 
happy enough at that point. One day I'll figure out how to work them, but on this occasion, I'm not going to. I didn't remove them. They're going back on the way to Nice beady cedar put on around their cover, make sure it's clean and dry. Same down here, I put a little sliver actually just around the bottom of the sump and cleaned up everything to make it as it should be. What I don't have, there is a little gasket in there. I actually don't have it in my stockpile of parts. So it looks perfect. I'm about to put a little bit of cedar on top of it again. Might be the thing to do, but that's what we've done. And time for the cover to go back on. Okay, our timing cover is sat on and into place. I have bolted into two phasers. I've sat on the all inner and bolted on the AC pump. And a good one for me was I was able to go back and reference my own video because I was had the wiring loom and I didn't after a week of sitting around here I couldn't remember where the loom went so I was able to go back and see where the wiring loom sat into place but anyway I'm going to change on this this housing here at this point in time I have cleaned in there prior to sitting on my timing cover and we're going to get that swapped out and the water pump bolted on and carry on. Tip guys, they say to actually flood the seal or lubricate the seal of the water pump before it goes on. Nice actually from a forward as well to give us nice new bolts and stuff before we assemble. But I have cooling anyway, it's a good into it. And I'm at the spinning their Im our impeller and stuff. Just to get it lubricated. Okay, water pump fitted. A couple of bits of tensioners and guides and stuff bolted on. I'm now going to sit in this from up here. In, sit on our crank pulley and... I'm not going locking right now. I'm trying to get my engine mount and get it assembled, get my engine mount and sit in place. Uh, might even sit on the alternator belt and then bring it up in the air to get underneath and start locking up that crank pulley. Hmm. All going back together relatively handy. Okay, we're underneath to lock the crank uh, pulley. This is a bit where you're all going to go crackers, right? If I'm turning that, pulling, get it out of it. If I'm pulling that bar, right? Now I have my locking pin screwed into a steel not an aluminium, block, okay? And that's up against the web of the actual crankshaft. Now also, I have stuck in there a screwdriver up above, I took off a little plastic cover here. Screwdriver stuck in here in the flywheel. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold that, and then I'm gonna pull that bear as hard as I can, okay? Two foot bear, whatever it may be. And, right, I can't see anything going around with that. And anyone that's gonna say, oh, that won't work, are going to be lads that haven't done this and don't do this kind of crack every day. Not talking about this car in particular, I'm just talking about cars in general. You know, you know what'll work and you know what won't work. And this is gonna work. Hold with one hand, pull with the other hand, a big and that's not stirring. 500 pounds per square foot is a book. Now I'm not doing what the book is saying here. I'm just doing what Peter Kennedy's head is saying. Okay, so look, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to squeeze that, and that ain't going to stir. That I can guarantee you. I'm going to squeeze, see where we're at, okay? Okay. My big squeeze is out happening. I forgot to mention about our pin and the one o'clock gap again, but you're all, anyone that's going to be doing this is going to be probably aware of it, all right? So squeeze. My screwdriver's gone out. A little plastic cover and go back on. I can take out my locking pin in here. I didn't remove the starter, as you're going to know about, because I use my screwdriver. And that's it. We're starting to get this side put together, okay? Time and then is done. I'm going to start taking off my tools up the top and start reassembling maybe turbos, intake manifolds and stuff. Okay, we're starting to get rid of a few parts now. We have our turbo bolted on, oil feed, oil return, water going to it. That little housing I think I showed that earlier on being replaced. Intercooler pipe on, a couple of brackets and stuff bolted on over here. And I'm just coming over here. I rolled on and I put on the vacuum pump. And now I'm going to go into the, the high pressure pump. But what I've just, I sent off the head and I was like, ooh, ooh, am I missing a bit? But lo and behold, I didn't. I have the little cap sitting there that I never sent up to him, but that little push rod, I don't know what you call it, hydraulic tap it or whatever you want to call it, is actually meant to sit in there. It's probably something that could catch a couple of people. Just make sure that you don't mislay that thing. It goes in underneath the actual pump. Just, when he just, Popped into my head there. Oh, that little thing. Just as well we have it sitting here. Anyway. Just don't forget that, okay? Right, I'm going to close it up for tonight. I'm probably going to bolt on my high pressure pump, but at that point, I'd say I'm, I'm stopping for this evening and I'm going to start again in the morning. Okay, I'm after fitting my intake manifold on. The six, I think, bolts on the bottom are squares up. Put on my throttle body here. Another couple of bits and pieces around here. I have the new rocker cover gasket sat in to the rocker cover. 
I'm going to start offering up that. I also popped in my injectors in here. Brackets and on, fuel rail and all that sits on after we have the rock cover on. So rock cover on, and then we're getting close to the end. There's a little water housing in there, guys, just underneath the vacuum pump. That little yoke, they snap off there. There's a part number. Just so as you have it, pops on. Just in there, okay? Okay. We're back together. I've stuck on the catalyst exhaust front section of pipe. Cleaned up the bit that was broken underneath, not broken, the treads were gone and I had to cut the bracket. Cleaned up the exhaust manifold gasket back there and stuck new nuts on it and cleaned up the treads. Uh, intake pipes, all the marine, all the duplicates back on, the air boxes. Everything at this point in time seems to be sitting back exactly where it should be. We have nothing left on our tray other than a couple of head bolts and a couple of cam box bolts that I didn't give them. And then the other old brackets off the off the old head, rocker cover gasket box that injectors in, intake uh, gaskets turn down there as well. But that's kind of it. Oil feed on turbo, oil return on turbo bolted on. Lambda centers connected in where they should be and held in their little brackets. And that's it. Everything is kind of squeezed together now. I didn't fill it with coolant as of yet. Thinking that maybe I might go in and just turn the key and see what happens. I don't know on this thing how hard it's going to be to prime this system, but... Hopefully a turn of the key and I'll probably hear a low pressure pump run back to back and hopefully once I do that maybe a couple of times and give it a couple of cranks you should be should be going to fire up. Fingers crossed. I have given the engine two turns and stuff. Doesn't feel like I have a massive load of compression on one of the strokes so I can I can get a boom turn, boom turn and kind of a, a little bit of pressure but not a big, you know, big squeeze. So I'm hoping that's just a bit of dirt or rubbish or water or whatever the hell was down around the uh, piston rings but yeah we'll get in we'll turn the key and we'll see where we go now i didn't clear any faults i didn't do anything at this point in time i just it back together i've checked for oil my old oil is still in there so i didn't change that as of yet i think i'll start it as it is with that oil with no coolant in it and just see okay guys we're up and running i was i got into the car i turned the key i was blobbering away to myself and then all of a sudden when i had it running i was trying to show you the first start and i came out i squeezed it out the door here and I came out I was talking about a lump of oil on my chin and then I came out and I hadn't got it recorded I don't know it actually cranked over fairly handy fairly straightforward sounded okay on the initial crank and then after maybe 10 or 15 seconds of cranking up she fired so we're running we're up and going a bit of smoke a bit of steam coming off of there now time to get a bit of coolant in it see where we end up apologies you didn't see the first I don't know god knows I, I almost press a button and not not actually press it right or something we're running anyway, that's the main thing. Uh, we're going to get a bit of coolant in it. Try and get some of the sundries put on and it maybe drove home tonight to be sure that everything is okay. I have it pulled out, getting ready to drive out. Just to show everyone, we've 147,054 kilometers on it. I'll um, give it a couple of miles and check in with you whenever I suppose I'm happy. Again, 50 or 100 miles or whatever it may be, I don't know. I just, I generally drive them just to be sure, that's all. I'm. Uh, being overly cautious as I get older, I guess, just to make sure that this thing is not going to go wrong at any point. That's kind of it. I'll talk to you in a couple of hundred miles or a couple of miles. Okay, though. guys. Or nearly empty on fuel. Um, miles, what have we got done? I don't know what we had. Had we 147 or something along those lines in it? About 100 kilometers or so done in this thing. Everything doing, everything as it should be. Bonnet is up, coolant level. I'm just after having a look in at it there to make sure it was all right. Um, driving as it should do. No steam at the back, that's what we had. I was getting bellowed, bellows of steam at the back. Um, coolant level staying where it's meant to be. Oil level is okay, it's had been changed. And yeah, that's it for this one, guys. She's working, she's done. Again, Ford, they crack heads mad, I believe. So just watch out for it. Could catch a lot of people. Um, make sure you get them pressure tested as well as just skimming them, okay? Um, for this one, what are my final thoughts? Don't know, not so bad. Handy enough to do in there. Loads of room once you get the plastic cowling or whatever you want to call it, but the wipers off and everything is fairly accessible. No big fancy deal. And the final thought again, I'm going to say with that big 500 or whatever it is, Newton meter crank bolt, I'm not paying any attention to it at all. Squeeze it. You squeeze a wheel nut. On a wagon, you'll know it's tight. Same here. Once it's squeezed, that's going nowhere. 
it's driving the finest it is going to stay driving the finest and at least we can open it the next day if we have to take it out and hopefully this won't be done for another long long time because heat bellowing out me there sorry um yeah guys thanks for watching hope you found it entertaining or learned something from it and i'll talk to you all in the next cartoon peter kennedy signing out talk to you later guys